Hey, 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 my name is Polish Links and welcome to the letter. Alright, so Luke went out. Uh, let's quickly make uh, a little reminder of what happened in the last episode. Uh, first of all, after what seemed to be a seizure, Johannes found the couple in the kitchen that helped usher the weak woman to the master's bedroom. Luke had to stay with Hannah today to care for her, singing of, of a lullaby until sleep came over them both. Mm -hmm. And also, Luke woke up in the middle of the night with a scream and in cold sweat. Finding comfort the warm body next to his, he tried to get back to sleep and forget him just playing his mind until Hannah called up from the loo. Next. Uh, come Sunday morning, Luke continued caring for his sick wife, going as far as preparing breakfast for her, putting his mind on Hannah. Even more, when he admitted worrying about their children's well-being, when sleep had taken over once again, he simply left her to rest. And that would be it for now. Grey skies loom over in the horizon. For the sun fights for every precious minute it gets to say. It will rain again soon, with the wind bringing along the gloomy clouds. Normal to Lexburn. Until then, it doesn't hurt to be out here for fresh air and sunshine. I walk to the gardens, what little of it there is at the moment anyway, and sneaked by the daffodils. These were the first we brought here and planted on my request, and if nothing else, they brought in a sense of peace. They were mother's favorites. Hmm. Close my eyes, I lift my chin up to welcome the light and that shines upon me. And for a minute I can imagine myself as one of the flowers, peaceful, blooming and all too happy to stand in its warmth. Life would be much easier if we were all like flower flowers, wouldn't it? But I didn't step out here to get all philosophical. I have problems much more practical than figure out the meaning of life, after all. Too many things have gone on these past few days. And I won't forget about them, even for just a moment. It's almost all saints, isn't it? To think I've almost forgotten. I speak the words absent-mindedly. The date means nothing to me as I neither worship the religion nor have any graves to visit. After all, mother was never given a proper burial. But it's a date, as good as any, for me to grieve. Otherwise, I would have done so every single day, crypting myself and shutting everyone else out. I can remember how the flames licked at her flesh and how it consumed her body until there was nothing left but ash. I stood there watching with the operator and the social service worker. If I could have been alone for all I cared, I felt alone. It was the most that could be done. Now attend the funeral of a dead prostitute, let alone pay for it. All that is left to her, prove that she had lived, is her name written in the ledger of Luxburn Cemetery, a lighter, and me. Pulling out the lighter from my jacket, I can't stop myself from flicking it open to stare at the flame and to run my thumb over her name. Eleanor. All in all, it isn't much, but it's something. And it would be wrong of me not to make something of myself when she would have given everything to make sure I can become anything I want to be. Feels like I'm stuck in a nightmare right now. What I would give to have you here by my side, mother dear. To see you smiling at me. Alive and as beautiful as ever. I'm afraid I'm starting to forget what your face looks like. I've already forgotten the shade of your hair. Eleanor Chandler. What's the wonder of a woman? For not everyone would have agreed. Not everyone had seen past her occupation, past her vices and her illness. All they saw was a poor woman who sold her body to make ends meet. And had a bastard son because of it. They didn't see the mother who worked hard to put food on the table for me. The woman who gave and gave and gave to me while expecting nothing in return. She taught me the merits of hard work, but for I loved her so, I worked hard for myself. I would not be so foolish, so selfless towards people who would never give back. I learned that from the father who plucked me out of an orphanage for his own selfish grain. I pocket the lighter before I can feel the urge to actually set anything ablaze. Considering my close proximity to the flowers, they would be the most likely victim of arson. Just the thought itself is blasphemous. 
Nevertheless, that doesn't save them from being picked. Just enough to make a bouquet of the things in honor of Eleanor. Would you be proud of me if you saw me now, mother? <laughs> Maybe. You are always so forgiving. No matter what trouble I got into, more than I deserved. Especially now. It's been a while since I've talked to my mother like this. I've been thinking of both my dear parents far too much, as of late, when I shouldn't. I have a future to look forward and the present to take care of. These memories of the past give me nothing but grief. The life of Lucille Mitchell Chanda should be nothing but a footnote in Luke Wright's non-existent autobiography. It's because of Hannah, isn't it? I worry that uh, she's all too much like mother that discouraged me, and the thought that I'm turning to my father is even more so. But even if history is so set to repeat itself, I'm not a child anymore. Content to sit aside, unable to do anything to help, and too inexperienced to think that the worst wouldn't happen. I have money to buy the best medicines and doctors, if need be. She will get better. She has to. And once we get over this little bump in the road, I can stop worrying. All will be right in with the world. Unfortunately, my time alone is cut short for. I... I think those flowers look beautiful, my lord. The parlor... The room where the lady stays for her tea. It could certainly use some. The voice is not familiar for. I'm not really one to remember such things. Who are you? She's cute. Who is that? Going with her attire, I would say that she's one of the housekeepers. Strange considering I've sent all of the stuff but Johannes away. And her face, as pretty as this, is unfamiliar to me. It would be lie if I said that it didn't set me on the edge. Most would say that I cared little for my employees. That isn't entirely untrue. untrue. However, I'd like to think I know the people who work for me, especially those who draw my home, even if it's just a face and a name. Besides, I'd remember a beauty such as her. So who is this? If she's someone impersonating a household staff to get in, she's doing a bad job at it. Of it. Didn't you get the memo? Are you new? Today is a day off. You aren't supposed to be here. I expect poor excuses and apologies. Likes of her often leave, but she merely smiles. Oh! Oh, no! I've been a servant here since you first came. What? And I see no signs of lying, nor here it in her words, yet if I can't be true... Wait a second, does she mean she was there before they bought the place? But I find that I feel like I can relax. Who in the world is she? I think... God damn it. Who is she? She has that sort of smile that makes make, that make one's kindness shine through without words or action. It reaches cries, filling them with a strange sort of mirth, as if she's just thought of something very funny. Who is she? Damn it! I need to know that! <sighs> Perhaps had it been another person I would have interpreted it as a deceitful grin. But the curl of her lips and the shine of her eyes are too soft to hold any malice. She takes my son as a sign that she can continue. And it's not like I feel an urgency to stop her. I'm not really in the mood for company. But I'm not adverse to it at the moment either. Entertaining a beauty like her, even for a little while, wouldn't hurt. It helps that she proves easy to listen to despite how oddly she speaks. I'm sorry, I apologize. I shouldn't have bothered you. Look at me, talking to the master of the house without even asking for permission. What will the others think? If you'll excuse me, I'll just... I haven't driven you away yet, have I? And it's your day off. I don't see why we can't chat a bit. Uh, of course. If that is what you wish. As, as long as it does not get you into trouble with... With the lady. 
To even take time for someone as lonely as me. No wonder that everyone under the mansion's employ is so fond of you. Hmm? Though it should have no longer been a surprise to me. You have always been such a... A kind and... Loving board. What the hell? I... I really don't understand anything right now. I had to stop myself from calling her out on her shite. It's almost as if she's talking about an entirely different man. No matter how big my ego gets, I know for the fact that I'm hardly in the running for best boss of the year award. The reason that most of my stuff stays because of the decent compensation. I'm not cheap. But if she wants to lay it on thick, I will owe it. Who'd want a beautiful woman complimenting them? I'm sure she'll be fine with this. We are just talking after all. Unless you had other things on your mind when you approached me. The words leave my mouth before I even realize what I've said. I panic a bit. Though I can get away with picking up women out in the city, sometimes even out of the county. I was taken care not to do so in my home or in my businesses. Not when I when it would be so easy for Han to find out about my infidelity through these channels. For seriously, I still don't see what the big deal about is. I just have a niche I need to scratch. I I know it must be amusing to see a girl flustered for for a man of your stature. But please don't say such things, my lord. Someone please someone tell me what the hell is written on that pendant. I saw you alone and simply thought you could use some company. Who in the world are you, dammit? Thankfully, I do, and I do count my lucky stars. It seems the woman takes the stroke rather than the casual pass it was intended to be. So how are you liking your work around the mansion? The place is wonderful, but I imagine the upkeep is ungodly with all the rooms and whatnot. I don't even want to think about how many people are on the staff roster. Work is work, my lord. It is a way of living. A purpose from day to day. It is certainly far better than doing nothing or having no food to eat. I, I wouldn't say it is a way of living, but the rest is true. The house itself is also beautiful. There's no lack of things to look at. I'm sure you've seen those books in the study. I, I can't read any of them yet, but if given the chance, I... I'm sorry. I shouldn't be thinking of those things. Especially when the rains, they might bring more work to us soon. It will definitely be much more... more difficult when it returns. Idling about is the least I should be doing. I guess you can put it that way if you want to be brutally honest about the whole thing. And the rain shouldn't be a problem. Hopefully. Maybe. If uh... At least she doesn't beat around the bush. I like the honesty. Yeah, ah, uh, same. Men would bemoan their status as a household staff, as a janitor or other manual role and believe themselves to be for greater things. And I would not begrudge the idea that one can always get better. But one shouldn't be so discontent with what they have either. The rain is something I simply must get accustomed to if I am to live here. I've not spent long in this place after all. But I have been told that it has rained in this nation since a mother's time and their mother's time. There is little we can do about it. I am just glad to have time in the sun, even for a short while. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> really, these sunny days have been welcome, though I can't imagine they'll last for long. Sometimes I just want to pack my things and leave for somewhere like, say, the Bahamas or whatnot. Get some sun and surf. But certainly, you will return for us, won't you? This is your home, after all. For us? Your people, they won't be pleased if the master of the house leaves. Of course, I can't very well leave my businesses hanging here, can I? <laughs> I just wish I could actually trust people enough to go on vacation without taking work with me. I've also got to get back here if I ever want proper meals. A proper pudding or something you'll never find out there. 
the woman nods in understanding, and must say that she makes for a fine listening ear. But who is she? For what she says next evening pause, whether she meant for me to hear it or not. And good tea. Uh, for, from what the cook has been telling me, I've yet learned how to prepare one. Perhaps once I do, it would endear the lady of the house to me. I never expected her to be so unkind after what she did for me. What? Though it's only if one catches her in a foul mood. I wish I knew how to avoid her anger. What? Only how dumb she means, Hannah. That woman really has a mean bone in her body. And when she actually is nasty towards someone else, it's really deserving enough, much like with what Rochelle. That Rochelle woman. Hell, she even tolerates Harvey from me, even if she did admit that she doesn't quite like the man. She must be the head housemate, right? I have to laugh at that. Not that I have room to speak, I don't deal with her myself anymore, for even Johannes has a few choice words about the head hug. She just been under right empl employ when she was also head housemate for my father. And if anyone's not going to get along with someone, I bet that crotchety old woman. I don't even remember her name. But the woman had been this strict upstart bitch who took one look at me, her mastered bastard son, and turned her nose up as if she were better by mere consequence of birth. But then she absolutely loathed my very existence. Perhaps the rumors had been true. She had a miscarriage while bearing another one of dearest father's children and sold me as an obstacle to her being granted a better standing in life. I remember that much at least. The only reason I haven't sucked her yet is because of her competence. Also because working under my household makes her absolutely miserable, her resignation made impossible by her pride. Nobody really gets along with that woman. I think everyone just tolerates her because of how old she is. I mean, not to be rude or awful or anything, but she's at the age where she'll be pushing Daisy soon enough. Is she? Really, my lord? I'm sure the lady is much younger than that. <laughs> I think the thought of tormenting the young and beautiful gives her reason to live. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem that way. Though I feel sorry for her. I feel like you are talking about two different people in the end. One's life should not be wasted away on hatred and anger. It is never good for the heart or the head to always carry ill thoughts. But... At the least, you are here for us. We are certainly so lucky to have a lord like you. The lady even more so. The gods smile down on her. Though, if I may be honest, she is... She is to be envied. Even when I have my suspicions about her, she is just so easy to talk with that I've forgotten. I don't know who she is and if she is actually one of the household staff, that will explain why she would so easily give obviously wrong statements about my character. For if she's here for malicious reasons, she would have done more than do small talk with me by now, wouldn't she? I have so many questions. Perhaps Curious DQ will kill this cat. It's strange that I've never seen you before. What's your name? You do not remember? Oh shit. I don't believe you've mentioned it, or am I missing something? You still cannot comprehend it. Can you, my lord? Her answer chips away the good mood I'm starting to get into. I have every right to be angry at the cryptic's response. She turns in subordination with her very presence alone. But instead of hurting vitriol the woman, I take a deep breath. I do not want my mood ruined further than it already is. Not right now, when I can let my temper take its curse another time. Whatever your name is, and no matter how long you've been working for us, that does not change the fact that you shouldn't be here. I'll call you a cab to bring you to the city if you want. Shouldn't I? What if I do not wish to leave? You are her, aren't you? I merely desire to stay by your side and serve. Is that such a deplorable thing? You are her, aren't you? Her gaze sent chills down my spine. Ooh. It's too easy to see the devotion, the obsession in her eyes. Not a good sort either, as her secret in makes me feel like I'm laid with a bear. The offness of her presence is all the more palpable with the feeling of bugs crawling on my skin and the silence that makes it seem as if the war has stopped. 
Any friendly atmosphere we may have had going for us is completely forgotten. Danger. Danger! A small part in the back of my mind screams. That part had, has kept me alive all these years. And in hindsight, I'd be stupid not to take heed of it. But I've grown arrogant, complacent and content to hide behind wealth and power. Yes, it's a, a deplorable thing, as you said, because I'd like to be alone now. Thank you very much. If you didn't want the day off, you should have reported to your superior. This is utterly unprofessional of you, and I shall be issuing complaints. In fact, if you know it's good for you, you should start looking for another employer. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, dude. It's at my thread that the smile on her face turns tight. I see. It escapes you still. This is... unfortunate. What escapes him? How despairing that this misery must go on. But maybe, if you come with me, I can help you. I can... Help with what? I went sure this out for me, I recall with a kiss. How dare you lay your filthy hands on me without my permission! I am not going anywhere with you! Now step back and walk away before I have you forcibly removed! She's her! As if a switch hand being flipped, the woman's question turns horrific. Oh, that may very well be the understatement of the century. She herself turns horrific. Her presence is focating, bearing down me. I am rooted in a spot through no fault of my own as my fear paralyzes. You are too much like that vile woman. Poisoned by her rotten influence and her filthy words. Ooh. But that can be remedied now that you're here. Oh, how we have waited to welcome you home. Eh? Come, my lord. The house beckons. When her fingers grabs the back of my coat, I finally find it in me to break off into a run. I can still feel her eyes me as I run back to the house. But I refuse to acknowledge it, let alone look back. But... Come on, you have to admit, she's a cutie. All I need is to get away from her and to make sure she stays away. If that means acting like coward and seeing out combat you keep me safe, Nobody can tell me to do otherwise. Bravery isn't something to be lauded if it comes along with stupidity. <laughs> How the hell is it evening already? It must have been a sight to see the usually composed and reserved look right bursting through the doors. Not that I have much of an audience unless there are other staff members who choose to disregard my orders for them to leave. Really, I still doubt that woman is one of the staff. Mastering up the torch, I look back through the windows to see if she followed me. She's gone. But I don't take any chances putting as much distance as I can between us. <gasps> Stopping to catch my breath, Johannes. Johannes, sudden appearance nearly makes me jump out of my skin. Don't fucking do that! You son of a bitch! If I had a gun, I would have shot you! If I had any love left for my mutter, I'd take offense. No. <laughs> But what happened to you? You look like you've seen a ghost. Oh, he found it were such a delusion. But if I but I can still feel her sharp nails digging to my back. The feeling was surreal for it to have been a ghost. There was his housekeeper. I, I think I'm I'm not sure. In the gardens. She was acting odd and I thought to remove myself from the scene. Strange. I made sure that so the soul had left and that the house was empty as requested. Describe this woman. She was. She had, she had pale skin, dark eyes, and long dark hair. She wouldn't give me her name. I half expect a name from him. You may know this is better than you, after all. But instead of an where he grows quiet. I'm pretty sure that this is not a good thing. I'm even more worried when the other man looks me over. I have to protest when he pulls back my collar. What in the bloody hell are you doing? Checking for marks. Needle marks to be exact. We don't have anyone like that among the staff. You could have easily been kidnapped. A cold feeling settles itself for me and the thought. I will only establish my power over the more unsavory characters in Luxburn. Or I thought I did. And the most harm I thought that could come to me would be slander, robbery or incarceration. Kidnapping. 
an attempt on my own person? I've forgotten I'm a hu as human as mortal as any other man despite my wealth and status. Fortunately, you look unharmed. But I advise that you be accompanied by trusted individuals at all times from now on. If not me, an assigned guard. I'll be informing them of this soon as they return from their day in the city. Already I can feel the energy leave me and the realization of what could have been. <sighs> Alright. Yes, I suppose we should do that. But I think I'd like to call today. I should be safe in bed, yes? I'll stand guard outside for the night. The madam has been inquiring about you, by the way. A guard. Any other threat and he'll not be enough to make me feel safe. That's what I saw. Whatever it is, it is I saw. Would one man be enough? Well, technically, given it's Johannes, maybe. That's all well and good, but there's something else. That housekeeper, she. Luke, you're home. I was worried about you. The grin that I can master is probably loop sided. Force a certain mouth shut to keep myself blabbing about witches and monsters. It goes here, I'm standing in the hallway, dirt on my pant legs and sweat dotting my forehead. A far cry from my usually pristine condition. I don't want to worry, Hannah. I cough. <laughs> what happened to you? You look like you wrestled in the mud and moss, dear. And those flowers. Were you gardening? Kinda. Uh, what? Oh, please. I didn't realize I still had them. I really did not. But there they are, still in my grip. The daffodils I had taken from the garden. Even the wake of my flight, I had refused to let go of them whether I was conscious of it or not. Shall I put them in a vase? Give them to Hannah or throw them away. I mean, why would I throw them away, right? I mean, that just doesn't make any sense. I did not save. Yet. Perhaps I did you say face or maybe a small part of me really had planned to take them for her. But at least that was a good choice. Whew. Lucky! But like a man presenting flowers to a Valentine's, I awkwardly thrust the bucket in Hannah's direction. They're for you. These are lovely, thank you. But aren't these? That's price is to be expected. And the open-ended question needs little interpretation. I've never given her daffodil this before, especially not from ones that I considered mine. They're for you. Don't make me think that kneeling around in the dirt was a waste of my time. It's not. It's not. Just... Are you feeling alright? I hope whatever I have isn't contagious. Uh. I'm not sick, Hana. I just got them for you. I thought they'd make you feel better, brighten up the room. I don't need my intentions questioned. The thank you was enough. And I didn't mean to insinuate anything. But you are right. Thank you, truly, for these. Mm, she's blushing! She takes them from me then, careful to crush the stems. There is still uncertainty on her face which enters and annoys me in equal parts. But she does look lovely with them, the very picture of her is something that should be immortalized in paint. They should be for mother. But it doesn't matter anymore. Why don't we turn in for the night? You must be exhausted with all that gardening. What does a dead woman care for flowers? Huh. Huh. It's raining. A really a little sleep was had and I feel completely drained come morning. <coughs> Even when Hannah rises from bed in spite of mild fever and invites me down to breakfast, I can't be bothered to drag myself up from the comfort of the sheets. It's not like I need to do something particularly important today. The rain that has started something sometime during the night doesn't help the mood. Okay, maybe it helps just a little. The strange sunny weather. Had been nice though, but for it to return us, it should be feels like a good sign to, of things to come. Perhaps things will settle back to normal, and the crazy drama that has gone on lately will die down. The red pink pitter patter of the rain feels the early morning silence with a steady beat. Thank goodness I don't have to be anywhere in a hurry today. I would hate to be caught unaware in this rain. 
With how it looks outside, it seems that the weather is making up for all the Sundays it has given us with a good old-fashioned downpour. It does let up within the quarter of an hour, however, at the beginning of a cloudburst like this, locals usually take it as an immediate sign. Large more abysmal weather is back, likely for good! Or something like that. Uh, well, seems like it got better here, so let's end the episode. And we'll go with the good weather from the very beginning of the next one. For now, hope you enjoyed. See you, the, see you tomorrow, hopefully. Bye-bye.